Okay, so hello everybody. Uh, welcome to another session of what next to do after BDS. And uh, today I have with me Dr. Rohit Bal, MPH from the States. And he's also my undergrad classmate from Ramachandra. He finished from 2010 to 15. So a short intro by Rohit about Rohit. Rohit, all yours. Thanks, Vinay. Thanks for having me here. Uh, so, um, as, you, as you already told that uh, we graduated together, I think 2015, we finished our uh, BDS. Then I moved to the States in 2017 and I did my MPH in uh, University of Colorado. And uh, uh, I graduated from there in 2019 and uh, now I'm currently working and uh, I'm planning on pursuing a PhD in the fall. Uh, that would be like in the August. So I'm kind of working on that right now uh, at, at the University of North Texas. So um, you can go ahead, like, you know, ask me any questions or sure, that sure. your viewers might have. Or... So uh, why MPH? That's my first question. Why Masters in Public Health? Uh, when uh, immediately after uh, graduating, like, I don't know, we were into clinics and we were working. And I think uh, one of the things is, like, I was kind of like wanted to look something at a, at a population level, like, you know, something that is non clinical oriented. So, one of the non clinical subjects were MPH. MPH was one of the uh, common ones, like, our seniors were pursuing. And uh, so, initially, when I came, I took MPH, I took it as a way that I thought I will do DDS later on. Okay. And MPH would be like my, my, bridging, my, my bridging course or like a stepping stone. But once I came here, I did the degree. I like, I liked it a lot. And uh, the job prospect, prospects like, were pretty good. So I just kind of like stuck to it and like, you know, I, I, I just kind of dropped the whole DDS thing because it just kept me satisfied. So if at all, if somebody wants to do a DDS, so how does MPH help? So usually before, I wouldn't say now, because it's, I, I didn't, I did not do DDS. I, I wouldn't be able to speak much to it. So a lot of people before they used to come and do MPH here and then on the side, they would do the requirements that would, that would get them into DDS. For example, they would, you know, you'd already do like, shadow a dentist in America, you would have to uh, clear the board exams, you know, you have to do like research, like research opportunities, volunteer opportunities. So they would kind of build up their uh, resume for to applying for the DDS, that's to apply to dental school here. And they would do that on the, on, on, you know, on par with the MPH. So that like, just, just so they can like beef up the resume and, and be like a stronger candidate when they apply for DDS. Okay. To increase the chance of acceptance. And do you get any exemption if you have an MPH? Because you have two parts. To uh, no, you don't get any. Nothing, right? No, no. no. And uh, any particular reason as why you went to the States for the MPH? Because uh, MPH, uh, I think I didn't introduce before, it's Masters in Public Health. Most of you must be knowing. Uh, it's there in other countries also, like Canada, uh, UK, Australia also, right? So anything uh, specific for you to go to the US for this? I think for, for me, my, one of my personal reasons was my brother was already here. So he came for his master's. He, he, he's an engineer. So that's why I'm, so you know, the, uh, I only had like a description of the US and what it's like, what it's like to be here and what other things. And the US, is, it's like, it's a pretty big country. And like, you know, and the, the opportunity here is kind of in, in, incomparable to like the other countries. Like, you know, US is one of the biggest public health systems like in the world. So with, almost like 50 states and, and, and so much of job opportunities. And you have like 4,000 new cities to apply to like in the wow. US. So I just thought like, you know, it's like, a, it's like a, a huge opportunity to come here, come to the other countries. And you can always migrate to the other countries later on because one, the US degree is kind of like, it's valid almost everywhere in the world. So, and it, since this is not a non-clinical degree, you don't, you don't have the barriers to examination and things like that. So, I thought, like, you know, if I come to the US, you know, I'll have, have like a universal degree, and later on, if I want to jump somewhere, I can. Uh, it's not easy to jump somewhere, but I thought, you know, this would be like a good kind of like a stepping point to go somewhere else if needed to. But I came in and I kind of like did some time my best to like kind of like stick here. That's nice. That's nice. Is, uh, what about like, do you require any examination to get into this course, or and uh, what are the requirements for a dental student to get into an uh, um, MPH course in the States? Any particular like so marks for, have to get in your uh, particular average. That's what I'm asking. On your uh, final year exams or something. All right. So most schools they'll they'll convert your GPA uh, from that directly. Your you know the percentage that you get in uh, in India. So India they they score everything out of hundred and and mm. everything is average on the percentage. So they'll convert that to something called a, a grade point scale, a grade point average. 
it's called a gpa so they'll so you'll have to apply it through this thing called west evaluation mm. so it's like it's called world education services so there you have to uh, send in your transcript it, you have to get it attested by uh, the the registrar from our college and then they will uh, they will convert your uh, marks to the us grade, grade so on the us grading system it's called a gpa and it's out of four okay so out of four the minimum gpa to most schools at least for the top 50 schools i've seen is minimum is three three okay. so usually people will have three usually if you are like passed with at least 60 percent your, your gpa should be above well above three it shouldn't be a problem and then uh the other two exams you require are gre and toefl ah huh, that's what the, the so, english one right the english books yeah. yeah so toefl is the the it's like a it's called a test as english as a foreign language so that's like a completely english exam so there are four sections reading listening uh, speaking and writing so that's like a, a it's i wouldn't say it's like a, a really advanced english i would say it's like as long as you you know you have a medium proficiency and you can speak and write english you should be able to crack toefl which shouldn't be like a huge challenge mm-hmm. so i had a challenge with gre cuz gre has two components that's english which is like a, a bit more advanced and math math is actually is a basic math but then since i think the challenge for dental students is we we don't do math to enter undergrad correct so we don't have you know uh, like the last time we did math would be from the 12th grade exactly. uh, that's if you taken bio math and if you somebody from pure science then that would be like in the, no way back in the 10th grade so i uh, i kind of like uh, had to like put in an effort just for the math, the math section but these are the two exams that you need to like uh, clear and uh, the higher the score in you, you score in gre like that kind of plays a uh, factor in, into your admission as well that's nice that's nice. uh now as far as uh, ma- public health is concerned there is a similar course in india right mds for masters in public health. so yeah. is it, the nature of the job is it similar to what you guys are doing out there or is there a slight difference uh, so when what are you doing in india and uh, in colorado if i'm not yeah you're in colorado yes so i would say there is there is similarity at same time is different so the the mds public health in in india is is dental public health so it's mostly oriented to to dental so the mph here you do is general, general so you can stick okay. to oral health also here you can come okay. in and you can stick your stick your gun to oral health as well or you can diversify you can go into whatever branch you want no you can go to infectious disease you can go into cancer research you can go into like diabetic research so you can like diversify based on where where you want to kind of pursue your career to sorry and to if, interrupt if you're not interested in this uh, sorry to interrupt but this you are giving me some sub specialties right you get to choose this yeah. at, choose this at the beginning of your course or you can you have to branch out after you finish so it's not necessary because you, uh, the specialties are like no uh, not related to your research field they mostly research uh, related to your uh, methods like what do you want to do so okay. for example like if you're an epidemiologist like what i did is i did mph in epidemiology so epidemiology is like somebody who designs studies who okay. like lead studies so they like the principal mission is how to do research so they're going to do like you know they they're going to like uh, form form a question and and then and then do research to kind of answer the question and then like you know collect the data analyze the data statistical analysis and things like that oh. so in, in that in, in once an epidemiologist it is your personal wish where you want to like kind of push your research to like do you want to push your research to diabetes or do you want to push your research to cancer or do you want to push your research to oral health so that is completely up to you so there's no specialty where you choose that's basically where you going to push yourself into so sometimes people based on based on the basic skill set you, you you get from mph you might get a job in in, in uh, to be a part of the cancer research team so they might go to a cancer research team and then they can they might develop their job there some might, some some might get the opportunity to work in, in infectious disease then okay. they go to work there and they kind of like develop develop the skill uh, skills there and they kind of like pursue the career there some while studying itself they go out of the way they work they reach out to professors who are who are like doing research in that field and they join with join up with them and then they start and start building their uh, resume in a way uh, they want to go into that particular field for example if you want to go into oral health they'll try to reach out to somebody who has done dental public health no okay. care and they try to and they try to like uh, merge with them and do some research with them and then kind of like push their career to, to, towards there so it's kind of up to your personal level where you want to push your research or where you want to push your career to 
you don't even have to stick to research you know some people take leadership position as well mm-hmm. so you could like like for example what sanjay is doing right he's like he's doing a leadership role in in ngo and re- as, as well as research so so it's kind of up to you so you have the kind of the autonomy to kind of like you know like to push your career you where you want to you can decide what you want yeah cool cool uh and do you have any idea about the scholarships and the approximate fees range for someone who needs to get into an mph from india in inr if possible uh in uh, so in i so the scholarship will depend on on the school so i think like uh most schools have have scholarships so and each school's requirement for a scholarship is different so i got a scholarship uh, in in second year i am getting in the first year as my wife she got a scholarship like right, right at the beginning so depend so without scholarship the fees would be anywhere from i would say like 20 or all the way up to 40 lakhs depending on the school so my school's fees was 35 lakhs uh, my uh, wife's school's fees was i think 30 lakhs before scholarship mm-hmm. okay so after scholarship uh, she, uh, she got like waived almost to like 8 lakhs and and mine i got scholarship in the second year so i got like around uh, from 35 to i got it like knocked to around 27 so uh, it would depend like some schools on the example on the uh, like the ivy league schools might have a little a higher fee range they might even go up to 40 to 50 lakhs so i would say it depends on the school on uh, how much you're going to expect but i would say expect anywhere from 30 to 40 lakhs depending uh, uh, like uh, b- before scholarship after scholarship it might vary okay that's nice so uh, that's it and uh, do you feel if somebody is like a young Uh, like when we were in an internship or something like that. somebody of that uh, age is watching so what advice would you give them if they want to pursue mph in the states like uh, what will be the general field of work what should they prepare themselves for the same i, I would say like like start sorry short and sweet not romba elaborate na simply keep it simple yeah i would say like like start start early like you know like immediately like like i like pushed it like very far very fast mm-hmm. like you know like two towards the end like i was like kind of like figuring out what to do for two years at the same time you don't have to rush like like look into all the options see what you like you know the mp is not the only non clinical uh, no option there are some other courses as well so like you know if you're going to if you've decided that you know you're going to pursue an mph like i would say start early get all the you no know, reach out to schools like you know like, i would say like one of the things back in prepare for your gre really well and and reach out to schools like you know reach out to professors ask them for scholarships ask them for opportunities are there and and can try to connect with them so that because sometimes if you're able to connect well with the professor that kind of opens up a much a lot more doors to you so go to schools websites research them like talk to the admission team like talk to them before applying and get their requirement and, and start early and then make sure that like for example you, you can't change your marks so what you got in under bds it, it, it's mark, you, you can't go back and change it that's like right. but whatever you can change for example your dr score to score try your best to you know uh, improve upon those and 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 make sure you know you get a good score and then uh, like put in the effort for that and then you can go ahead you know so it, it's not like a very tough process so you should be relatively easy as long as you start early and uh, all the best for your phd so thanks so much meeting for it right you're going to join a university soon yeah i'm going to join the fall i'm going to go and join all this cool cool thanks and is it okay if i can share your email id so if somebody wants to contact you so i'll just yeah yeah, yeah go ahead that's okay no okay. I'll put in thanks the chat thanks for uh, joining rohit that's a wonderful session uh, hopefully we will uh, have a recording session soon with you with your phd yeah sure looking forward to it yeah. thanks rohit bye